it's the morning of our first round of lamb harvest for 2017. Last fall, when we harvested our lambs, it didn't go the way I'd wanted. We outsourced using a mobile butcher, and though nothing went terribly wrong, it just left me with a feeling that I needed to do it myself if I wanted the harvest to be consistent with the husbandry. Coming to that conclusion led me on a journey into 2017, a journey into the agrarian renaissance. This is raising our own food and managing our own harvest and then preparing it in the kitchen respectfully in a manner in which honors the animal. <laughs> Friends David and Kim are here to help us along with the process. Some muscle to help hoist the lambs. Out of the hole. Around the tree. Wait, this way? Yeah. And then back in the hole. It's a trick to remember the knot. And then tighten it up. And then you cinch it down. And it's kind of easy to untie too. So today we're harvesting three of our ram lambs. This is our first batch we're doing for customers. We're gonna do another batch next week. And they are separated off, so they're gonna be and they're in a contained area. They have not been given food or water since yesterday morning, except this guy here sticking his head out, eating the grass that's growing, or weeds, I should say. They're going to be lured into this area one at a time with our certified organic alfalfa pellets. The view is blocked off, so the ones in wait over here are not gonna see what's going on. And my main flock of views are just over this way, and I didn't want them seeing either, so I have it blocked off that way. And we have the crook here on standby in case things go sideways. So we're gonna be doing a more traditional style slaughter than, we, than what happened last year. Last year, the slaughtermen used a rifle, and we are just going to be doing it the more traditional style with a carbon steel knife, a very, very sharp you carbon steel again? knife. Scored me in my neck a little when I went to do the kill. He flinched and bounced up a little bit, got me in the neck, but it's 
serves me right. It's trying to kill him. He's <laughs> doing his job, trying to stay alive. So, that's the way it goes. Three. Wet, but very good. This year's lamb harvest went so much better than last year. It was a lot more work, considering last year all I had to do was set things up, get ready for it. With the help of our friends David and Kim, and then later Rob and Rose came over to help load in the hay, but Rob actually gave us a hand with the harvesting as well. And it took us four hours to harvest the three lambs, so that was a long day, and we obviously didn't move very quickly. But as far as an overall experience goes, it was significantly better than last year. It was much more peaceful, it was very relaxed, very, very low stress. Each lamb got a little bit better. The only harvest, the only full harvest we filmed was the first lamb. And we probably should have filmed, if any of them, the last one, because the last one went so much better than the first. But overall, everything went really well. And what I really think was a big improvement this time, not only doing it ourselves, but also I was much better prepared for it emotionally. I was much better with my boundaries with the sheep this year. Last year I was very attached to the lambs that we had raised for meat, so the harvest was very difficult. But this year, having breeding stock and having ones that we knew we'd be keeping here for quite a while uh, versus ones that we were just raising for meat, I was able to make that separation. And same for little Buddy. Um, though he was very fond of, of the rams, I'm we... right up here, guys. Say hi. Hi. We were both much more prepared and we didn't have that same level of attachment that we did last year. That made the process a lot more smooth for both of us. Another thing I liked about the process this year was that we were able to save all of the organ meat. Last year it was all lost when it went to the butcher's shop so we were able to retain all of that this year which was really nice and also we saved the hides. A friend of mine, Sean, is going to actually be tanning the hides, which is a really cool use for them. Really excited about that. After loading up the lamb carcasses, I drove them to a local uh, butcher where they were being cut and wrapped and frozen for customers. The lambs that are gonna be harvested for our meat supply, I'm actually gonna do the butchery for. I was just not able to provide that as a service for our customers for mainly space reasons. I don't have enough 
processing area and I don't have enough freezer space to put all the meat in the freezer and hold it for customers until it's frozen and ready to be picked up. The rams this year were a little bit smaller looking than the ones that we had raised last year. One of them, David brought a hanging scale so we can kind of get an idea of the hanging weights. One of them was 60 pounds and the other two were about 45 pounds hanging weight. And we'll be getting the official hanging weight pretty soon from the butcher so we'll know exactly where we stand with how we did this year versus feed consumption, inputs versus yield. Next week we have four more lambs to do. These are gonna be ewe lambs. The ewe lamb harvest is gonna be a little bit smaller than the ram lambs for obvious reasons. The rams grow faster than ewes. Be sure to check back when we get all of our final numbers in. We'll go over the numbers and do our end of year harvest analysis.